Okay, again, we're going to pack in a lot of information into this one video. This is Square Roots, Lesson 20B. I have lots of videos linked in this description to help you in case you need it. When we're raising a number to the second power, we're squaring that number. 3 to the second power is 3 squared. It means 3 times 3, and that equals 9. We, can, we know we can find the area of a square shape by multiplying length times width, even for a rectangle. But area equals length times width. All the sides of a square shape have the same measure. So here we have a square, and it's got 10 units width and 10 units length. We can find the entire area in here by doing 10 times 10, couldn't we? 10 times 10 would be 100, so the area would be 100. We could say, because it's 10 times 10, that we have 10 squared equals 100. We square the measure of one side. It's a 10, so we do 10 squared. We find the area. And the square root of 100 is 10. So let me show you these symbols here. This is a radical sign. Looks like a long division sign with a little hook at the end, doesn't it? This entire green thing is a radical expression that includes the radical sign and the number that's beneath it. This red part, this 25, is called the radicand. It's only the number or expression that's under the radical sign, okay? So, those are some important words for you. The square root of a number is a number that is multiplied to itself that will equal the given number. And the square root of 25 is 5. 5 squared, 5 to the second power, equals 25, because 5 times 5 equals 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. We take one of them. This is our radical sign, and it's the symbol for square root. This is the square root of 25, and it equals 5. The square root of 16 equals 4. See? 4 times 4 is 16, so the square root is 4. We think what times itself equals that number. It's going to really help you if you know the times table and the squares of numbers. Now, these are called perfect squares. There's no rational numbers, which means there's no fractions or decimals. These are just whole numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. See? So these are all perfect squares because they're just whole numbers. When you multiply them to themselves, they equal that number, see? When we see this, it means what is the square root of 49? So what number times itself equals 49? 7 times 7 equals 49. So 7 is the square root. 7 squared equals 49. The square root of 49 equals 7. See? We can actually take this square root symbol off, this radical sign off, if we put that little two exponent by the 7, see? It'll remove that radical sign just by putting that little 2 up there. What's the square root of 225? Well, 15 times 15 equals 225. 15 squared equals 225. So the square root of 225 is 15. We just need one of them. What's the square root of 0? Well, 0 times 0 equals 0, so the square root of 0 is 0. We can even do it for fractions and decimals, so rational numbers. The square root of 49 hundredths, well, 7 tenths times 7 tenths equals 49 hundredths. That means 7 tenths squared equals 49 hundredths. So the square root of 49 hundredths is 7 tenths. It says to find the length of the side of each square. The area inside of this square is 121 feet. It's 121 square feet. What number can we multiply to itself that will equal 121? 11. That means it's 11 feet on one side. See, because all the sides are equal, it's a square. That's the definition of a square. All the sides are equal. So we only need the measure of one side. And when we multiply 11 times 11, we get 121. That means the square root of 121 feet is 11 feet. The area of this one is 64 centimeters. Make sure you put your labels, feet, centimeters. So what is x equal? 
8 times 8 is 64, so the square root is going to be 8, so x equals 8 centimeters, okay? And we can find the square root that is between two perfect square roots. So remember, a perfect square root is like these. It's a whole number, like 5 times 5, 8 times 8, 9 times 9. No fractions or decimals, no rationals, okay? We can find a square root that's between two perfect square roots. So this is not a perfect square root. It falls between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. See? 18 is in between 16 and 25. The square root of 16 is a 4, and the square root of 25 is a 5. So we'll know, because the 18 is in between them, that the square root of 18 is between 4 and 5. So now here's a bonus. We can use a calculator, or just multiplication, to try to find numbers that would work to be the square root of 18. It's closer to the 16, isn't it? 18 is closer to 16 than it is to 25. So if it's a, between 4 and 5, we can pick a decimal number like 4.2 to see if 4.2 times 4.2 equals 18. Well, not quite. It's 17.64. So let's try a little bit bigger one, 4.3. Oh, that got too big. 4.3 times 4.3 is 18.49. So now we're over 18. We're trying to get to 18. So we have to go back. So instead of doing 4.2 or 4.3, we'll go in the middle and do 4.25. That's in between these two. We do 4.25 times 4.25 and get 18.0625. And we could keep going on and try... 4.245 and go farther and farther into decimals, but this is close enough. So we could say the square root of 18 is approximately 4.25. We use that approximate symbol because it's not an exact answer. It's not exactly equal to this, is it? It's just approximately, all right? So this says the area of a square is about 42 feet. The length in feet of each side is between which two numbers? So 42, hmm, 42 comes between two perfect squares, 36 and 49. And the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 49 is 7, so the answer is 3. It comes in between 6 and 7. See? 42 falls right in between these, doesn't it? So it's going to be a 6 decimal number, isn't it? if we tried to find it exactly. So the answer is three. It falls in between six and seven, all right? You might find problems like that on the test. Now, this is really something else. We know the square root of 36 is a six, but square roots can also be negative. We can multiply negative six times negative six and get a positive 36, can't we? We talked about multiplying integers in video 18C multiplying negative and positive integers. A negative times a negative makes a positive. So if you see this plus or minus before the radical sign and then the 36, that means they're willing to accept 6 and negative 6 as the square root. When you see it by itself without the plus or minus, that means they're looking for the positive one. Okay, But if you see the plus or minus in front of it, that means they're willing to accept positive and negative as the answer. This is the principal square root. It's a 6. So there's actually two square roots for every positive number. We can have a negative and a positive because when we multiply that negative times the negative, we get a positive. Isn't that something? All right? Now here's something else that you probably don't know. Did you know that there's a little 2 that is not written and we assume it's in front of the radical sign up here? This is the square root of 16. There's actually a little 2, but we don't write it. We just assume it's there, and we write the square root of 16 equals 4. But there's actually a little hidden 2 there. Isn't it silly how they do that? They have a hidden 2, hidden 1s for the exponents. A 1 is a coefficient. Now, when you see a little 3 there, that means the cube root. That means there's three numbers multiplied to itself that will equal 8. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 to the third power equals 8. And we can have 4th and 5th and 6th and 7th and 8th 
roots. That little number is called the index. Now, if you want to know more about this, you can see my Algebra 2 videos, 7.1a and 7.1b, and it'll teach you more about odd roots and kth roots and these indexes, okay? That's all considered high school algebra. They just don't cover it in GED math. They just skip right over it, okay? So, to find a square root using the calculator they're going to lend you, we first need to hit the shift key. So if you look at this calculator, you'll see a shift key right here. And this shift key is the same thing as on your typewriter or your computer, I mean. I'm old, I said typewriter. So when you hit this shift key, you know that it's going to let you type these numbers or symbols above the numbers here, right? You can hit the shift key to get the quotation marks or a question mark, right? Well, same thing with the calculator. You hit that shift key, and that's what gets you to all these symbols above the key. See? Look at all these symbols above the keys. So if you hit shift, then you'll be able to get to this square root sign right here, this radical sign that's above the x to the second power. You'll be able to get to that. See that? So what's the square root of 81? We put in 8, 1, shift, and we hit that key, which is actually the x squared key, but we're, we hit shift, so it's going to that radical sign, isn't it? We hit equal, and the display will show us 9. So we can find square roots that are not perfect square roots, like 38. 36 is a perfect square root, isn't it? Well, 38 isn't. That's going to be some weird decimal number, isn't it? So we put in 3, 8, we hit the shift key, and then we hit that radical sign in equals, and it's going to show us this nice decimal number as the square root. Isn't that something? Now, on your cell phone calculator, you know, when you turn your cell phone sideways, it makes a scientific calculator. You can actually hit the square root key, and then the 3 and the 8 equals, and that will give you the square root of 38, and it'll give you the same answer as this, okay? Now, if you have to watch the video again a second time, that's no big deal, all right? You should be ready to do the skill focus on page 237, but I want you to realize that you're expected to learn all high school algebra in just these five little lessons, and then all of high school geometry in these five little lessons. And if someone said, come over to my house five times for five lessons, and I'll teach you all of high school algebra, you'd probably think they were crazy or that the lessons were each going to last a week, right? So watch my Algebra Word Problems playlist on the side as much as you can because that's going to help you pass the GED test. There's a lot of word problems, and if you become very familiar with them, it's going to be secondhand to you, all right? We're going to talk about solving word problems and working backwards to solve them in the next lesson, 20C. But all these videos are going to be linked in this description to help you. You can either pause the video right now and write these down so that you can watch them as soon as you're able, which I would do before you go to the next lesson. Or you can open up a second browser window so that you can click on them, watch them, and then come back to this one to click on the next one. All right. You can watch Algebra 1, video 11.1, .1, or I would advise you to watch all of Chapter 11. If you really want to pass this test and do everything to help yourself pass this test, watch all of Chapter 11. I wanted you to watch all of Chapter 5 before, so you got your work cut out for you. All right. Going to be a link to the previous video 20A that we just did, and I'm rooting for you. I think you can do this. You just have to be determined and want it bad enough, all right? You have to have grit, right? I'll see you next video. Have a great day. Bye.